The immune system and lymphatic systems work together. These systems include the leukocytes or white blood cells, adenoids and tonsils in the neck, clusters of lymph nodes, the thymus, the spleen, lymphatic clusters in the intestines, and the cell-making bone marrow. All these regions work together to prevent antigens or invaders from destroying our cells and causing us harm. The lymphatic portion of this system is arranged of a lymphatic vascular network and while the immune portion is made of cells that fight the antigens or invaders. The network of vessels that serve the capillary include arterioles, venules, and lymphatic vessels. This allows the oxygen in the blood to easily diffuse out of the capillary to the cells that need it. Also, any waste created by the cells in addition to carbon dioxide can leave the cell and easily enter the capillary to be taken away. Nutrient-rich and oxygenated blood is delivered to the tissues by arterioles feeding capillary beds. Venules drain capillary beds by removing waste-filled, oxygen-depleted blood from the capillary beds. The exchange of substances between blood inside the capillary and the cells outside the capillary often leaves extra fluid in the interstitial spaces. Some of this fluid is not returned back to the blood in the capillary bed, but is returned through lymphatic vessels from the tissue spaces. Therefore, the vascular network of a capillary bed includes arterioles bringing blood in, capillaries exchanging substances with the cells and interstitial space, venules removing blood from capillary, and lymphatic vessels removing escaped fluid into the interstitial space. Lymph is the fluid that has escaped from the capillaries into the interstitial and extracellular spaces. It is a clear liquid similar to plasma but without the larger proteins such as hormones and albumin. Lymph is accumulated interstitial fluid. The lymphatic system is a vascular network to remove that fluid. An excess amount of lymphatic fluid accumulation in the tissues is known as edema. This may be due to increased rate of fluid escaping the capillaries and or inadequate removal of that fluid through the lymphatic system. In pregnant women, tissue edema collected by the ankles due to the baby pushing on the inferior vena cava or iliac vein. Increasing the pressure of the veins distal to that point, this increases the exit pressure of the capillary beds in the legs and forces more fluid out of the capillaries into the tissue spaces, i.e. it creates more interstitial fluid. A second problem is that if lymphatic drainage is also compromised, like a baby pushing on the lymphatic vessels, then the tissue drainage will also be compromised and further exacerbate the problem by reducing the rate of removal of the accumulated fluid. Lymphatic fluid goes through a number of lymph nodes for the immune system cells to inspect and identify antigens. Specialized lymphatic structures in the villi of the small intestine called lacteals are used to transport fat that has been absorbed. Lymphatic vessels have a structure that is similar to thin-walled veins because they have such low pressures which are ideal for drainage. The lymphatic vessels are more delicate than veins and also contain valves to prevent backflow. Along the lymphatic vessel network are a series of lymph nodes to provide locations for leukocytes to collect and inspect the lymphatic fluid for any antigens. This makes even more sense when you consider an area of damage like a splinter entering the skin. Lymphatic fluid, part of swelling, in the local area is drained through lymphatic vessels. Be re before returning that fluid to the blood, it needs to be inspected for any antigens that may have entered the body with the sliver. There are two drainage points where lymphatic fluid is returned to the blood, the upper right quadrant of the body, which includes the right arm, right shoulder, and right side of the head, drains into the right subclavian vein by the right lymphatic duct. The rest of the body drains into the left subclavian vein by the thoracic duct. Because the pressure in lymphatic vessels is so low, any drop in pressure in the thoracic cavity, like during inspiration, will draw more fluid from lymph vessels into the subclavian veins. The repeated squeezing of skeletal muscles throughout the day with regular movement and activity is another mechanism for moving lymphatic fluid forward and toward the subclavian veins. This repeated squeeze and relax of the skeletal muscles is effective because of the presence of lymphatic valves so that when squeezed, lymph only moves forward. Lymph nodes are small immune tissue clusters containing several different types of leukocytes. 
The inner region where most of the lymphatic fluid flows through contains macrophages or T lymphocytes. The outer, more dense region contains antibody producing B lymphocytes. The important regions of the lymph node histology are the medulla or inner region and the cortex or outer region. The cortex contains circular region called germinal centers where B lymphocyte plasma cells produce antibodies when an infection is present. Lymph nodes can be found individually in series along a lymphatic vessel or grouped in clusters in specific regions of the body. Lymphatic clusters are found all over the head and neck, face, around the ear, neck, back of the head, the axillary region, the inguinal region, iliac regions, and the legs. Here is the lymphatic network of the head. Here is the lymphatics of the arm and axillary region, including the breast. Lymphatic networks also surround our organs. Here is the stomach and pancreas beneath. See the lymphatic network around the appendix? This is why it gets inflamed so quickly when it's infected. There are other lymphatic system organs or tissues distributed throughout the body. The main areas, but not limited to, are the spleen, thymus, tonsils, and Peyer's patches in the ileum of the small intestine. The spleen is located in the upper left region of the abdominal cavity, known as the hypochondriac region. It is a lobular organ encased in a fibrous capsule that filters and inspects our blood. The spleen is protected by the lower three left ribs. It is easily ruptured when hit with a force, such as a steering wheel in a car accident. As an organ, it is fairly flimsy and difficult to repair, which is why it is often removed rather than repaired after it has been damaged. If it is removed, much of its physiological functions can be taken over by the liver and kidney. Each small lobular compartment inside the spleen has an artery leading to it. Blood is filtered here and worn out red blood cells are removed. Blood drains out via sinuses leading to splenic veins. As the tiny artery enters a splenic compartment, it is surrounded by clusters of lymphocytes to inspect the incoming blood for antigens. In this capacity, the spleen functions much like a lymph node for the blood. The cluster of immune cells surrounding the arteries leading to each compartment are called white pulp, as seen histologically. On a histology slide, the spleen tissue can be put through a dark purple stain and the white lymphocytes take up more stain, making them darker. This is why white pulp is actually dark purple in color. Red pulp make up the vast majority of splenic tissue. This is the region of the spleen where the worn out red blood cells are removed and broken down by macrophages. The large spaces filled with blood inside the spleen can serve as a reservoir where under sympathetic stimulation almost half of the blood retained in the spleen can be put back into circulation. In some animals, such as dogs, this accounts for their remarkable exercise capacity due to the enhanced oxygen delivery ability of their working muscles, much like instant blood doping as discussed in the blood chapter. The spleen can also make new red blood cells under extreme anemic conditions in an adult. The thymus is an irregularly shaped mass located in the upper region of the mediastinum and is a very organ in babies and toddlers. The thymus reduces in size and almost entirely disappears in old age. Lymphocytes that enter and mature within the thymus emerge from the thymus as T lymphocytes. It releases a hormone called thymosin, which regulates its development of T lymphocytes. Histologically, the thymus stains dark in the outer regions of the lobules. These regions are called the cortex. This is where lymphocytes develop into T cells. The lighter inner region is called the medulla, and the majority of blood vessels are located here, as this is where the young lymphocytes enter the thymus, and the mature lymphocytes, now T cells or T lymphocytes, leave the thymus. The tonsils are clusters of lymphatic tissue found at the entrance of the respiratory and digestive systems, nose and mouth. The purpose of these lymphoid tissue clusters here is to trap, identify, and destroy any incoming antigens. There are three pair of tonsils, the pharyngeal tonsils in the back of the nasal cavity or nasopharynx, the palatine tonsils seen in the back of the throat, look in the mirror and say, ah, and the lingual tonsils found in the posterior portion of the tongue. 
The tonsils have a rough surface with deep cracks in them called crypts. The antigens that enter these crypts allow the immune cells to inspect them and ultimately destroy them. During an upper respiratory infection, these crypts can ooze pus, resulting in a white coating that is visible when you open your mouth. Other lymphoid tissues throughout the body include the mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue, or MALT. This can include the tonsils as well as clusters of lymphoid tissues in the ileum of the small intestine called Peyer's patches. Peyer's patches are found as large masses of lymphoid tissue clustered together. Here we see a section of intestine with the lymphoid clusters and a section without for reference. Peyer's patches allow for any antigens that enter our body through our gastrointestinal tract to be inspected and destroyed. There is an enormous amount of lymphoid tissue throughout the intestines. The expanse of intestinal lymphoid tissue makes up more than half of all of the lymphoid tissue in the body.